So it has been a long road to this here. I've spent about six weeks working on the real lathe, and I'm finally at the end. I am ready to turn something. Almost. See, I have this great spindle over here. It's three quarters of an inch, solid steel, and it has a beautiful 60 degree taper right at the end. The only problem is, there's nothing here that's gonna actually drive the work. And if I can't drive it, I can't turn it. Now, over the years, manufacturers have come up with a lot of good strategies for getting work mounted to a lathe spindle. For instance, here's the spindle on my commercial lathe, and it's got two ways of attaching accessories. It's bored out for a Morse taper, which means I can throw in any accessory that has a Morse taper on it, and it'll stick in there really nicely. It's also threaded, so I can screw on anything that has the matching 8 TPI thread, like a chuck or a faceplate. And these are the standard ways that you connect things to commercial lathes. Now, obviously, I am not going to be boring a Morse taper into the end of this spindle. I don't have anywhere near the equipment for that. So the other option is to add threads. Now, I've thought about getting a big tap and actually tapping threads into the spindle, but that's going to require a big sort of specialized tap, and I'm nervous about my ability to cut the threads square enough that the thing will actually run true once I'm done. What would be much better is if there was a piece of hardware out there that would slip onto this and allow me to just add threads to the existing spindle. And thanks to the gardening industry, there is. This is a three-quarter inch threaded hose coupler. And watch this. It slides on there like butter. So this is going to solve my tool mounting problems. Of course, it's not going to solve them exactly the way it is. I need to do some modifications. First, this thing is threaded on both ends, and I don't need threads on the back end, so I'm going to cut them off. This is brass, so it works pretty easily. Then, I want to secure it really tightly to the shaft itself, and I think the best way to do that is with set screws. So I'll drill and tap three of the flats in the middle of the fitting, and add 1024 set screws to those. I'll mark their location on the spindle, and drill some holes a little bit bigger than the set screws. That's going to allow the screws to reach inside the shaft to bite down a little bit better, and it's going to keep them flush with the exterior of the fitting, so I'll still be able to put a wrench on this thing when I want to use it to tighten or untighten something. Once it's installed, I'm effectively going to have a threaded spindle nose. So now I've got a threaded spindle. The only question is, what am I going to thread to it? Well, how about this? It's a three-quarter inch cast iron floor flange for regular cast iron pipe. Now, this might not look like very much on its own, but does it remind you of anything? How about a faceplate? It looks an awful lot like a wood-turning faceplate, and it threads right on to my brass fitting. Getting it on and off is really easy. I can thread it on by hand, and then I made a little tool just by taking a piece of an old drill bit and sticking it through a little chunk of oak. I fit that into a hole that I drilled in the flange, and then that's like a wrench. I grab the flats on the brass fitting with a crescent wrench, and I can tighten the thing up until I know it's not going to move. Now, I've put the threads here where they are because I have this really great point already on my spindle. Sometimes I'm going to want to use this great point for turning between centers. But if I don't want to use it, that's fine. I can just mount up my piece using a simple hardwood spacer. And then this functions just like any other lathe spindle would, and I'm ready to start turning. Okay. <laughs> it has seriously all led up to this. I've spent the last six weeks working on this lathe, and now it's ready to go. So here's the maiden voyage. Bring my tool rest over. I think I'll adjust it. Just a tiny bit higher. All right, let's turn. So, it works. I even got a very good finish on the wood. It hasn't been sanded or scraped or anything, and the green is clear, and it's even got a bit of a shine to it which means I don't have too much vibration and things are turning steadily and concentrically. That's great. Gotta call that a win. 
But there's a couple of other things I really want this lathe to do. I'd like it to turn a bowl, and I'd like to turn a spindle with it. And for me to turn the spindle, I have to use my tailstock. Tailstock design is fine, but right now it's not sufficiently aligned. It's off from the spindle by an eighth, maybe three sixteenths of an inch. That's kind of a lot in lathe country. So I'm going to unscrew it from its base, move it around, shim it, plug the holes that were originally there, and then very carefully reinstall the tailstock so that it's well aligned and I can get on with some spindle turning. So, now that my headstock and tailstock are really well aligned, I'd like to turn this short little test spindle. Now, I've got a center on the headstock and a center on the tailstock, so putting it between those centers is easy. Then I just need to drive it somehow. When woodturners typically do a spindle, they usually use this thing. It's a spur drive. And I've never loved these. Um, I do all the tricks. I pre-drill the hole and I cut saw curves and I tap it in beforehand. But sometimes it still strips out or you put a little too much pressure on and the piece of wood splits. I've always felt like these were not the best solution. And since I'm building my own lathe, I thought, well, hell, now's a good time to experiment with something better. So I'm going to take a page from the machinist handbook here, which is they turn work between centers all the time, but they can't use some sort of spur drive because, you know, you can't drive spurs into steel or brass or whatever. So instead, they use this thing called a dog, and it's right here, sort of a teardrop-shaped piece. Usually it's cast iron, but we can use wood because it's a wood lathe. And what happens is your piece of stock just goes right into the hole like this, and then you tighten down this screw right here. And the other part of this arrangement is a dog plate. And it's just, just like a face plate, except it's got a slot. And the slot accepts this dowel. And it's free to move back and forth because the whole thing is sort of auto-centering. As soon as you set it up between centers and get the dog into the dog plate, it'll be ready to go. And then this notch in the dog plate will provide all the force you need to drive the piece. So let's give it a try. I'm going to install my spindle into my dog put my dog plate on the lathe, set the whole thing up, bring in my tailstock, then I'll turn the lathe on, smooth the whole thing out with the roughing gouge, and add a couple of details with the bowl gouge. Nothing super fancy because I'm honestly not a great spindle turner and I'm pretty out of practice now. I mostly do bowls and stuff. So look, I wouldn't enter in any contests or anything, but I mean, it's a spindle. It's got beads and coves and a, a nice little, like, handle part so I could hold it and, I, I don't know, mashed potatoes with I'm not sure. I, I was winging it. I just, I just turned something. But the, the point of it is, I mean, the lathe works for spindles. So far, so good. Next thing, I want to turn a bowl. So if I'm going to bother turning a bowl on my lathe, I want it to be something good. My first thought was, I'll use one of these walnut turning blanks that I've got. Walnut's a nice wood, it's easy to turn, and there's some really good figuring in this. I can make a platter or a thin bowl. It'll be great. Or, instead, I can show some backbone and actually see what this lathe can do. And with that in mind, I went out to the wood pile and got this. This is a big, beautiful chunk of spalted maple, and it should make a wonderful, deep vessel. And I think that's going to be more fun and a better test of what this lathe is actually ready to handle. Now this piece is very narrow and deep, so it needs a lot of prep work. I'm going to take off the ends with a hatchet. I'm going to cut it roughly round with my chainsaw. And then I'm going to use a foreplane to give myself a flat face and attach a face plate with some nice long screws. Okay, so I am happy to admit that this might be a bad idea. I have a very large chunk of wood chucked up here. Uh, <laughs> this is just one of those moments where you, you have to wonder if you have the courage of your convictions or not. Did I mean all those things I said when I said this was going to be a real lathe? I don't know. We're, we're going to find out. Wish me luck. Contact! Is not bad. The lathe is shaking a little bit, but I'll be honest, my other lathe shakes if I chuck up something like this. I'm gonna sharpen up some bowl gouges and get to work. Let me start by roughing it, 
and then I'll do some shaping work and see what kind of vessel I can turn this into. So, I think it's time that we should just call it. The lathe works. It, it completely works. Here's the piece I was just working on. I think I'm going to make it into like a nice big vase or something. It has amazing spalted figure. But the lathe does everything that I wanted it to do. It'll do faceplate work, spindle work, it'll rough a big chunk of wet wood right off the fire pile. So the obvious question that I'm sure you're asking is, Rex, when are the plans going to be ready? And the answer is, I don't know. Because as much as I like the lathe, I have to admit, it's not ready yet. It's still, it's still kind of a prototype. Um, I've got one pulley that's really wobbly. I have to pull it off and remake it. The motor mount isn't quite as sturdy as it should be. Uh, a number of my viewers didn't like my design for the tool rest, and having used it, I agree with you. The tool rest design has, it's got too much overhang for the tool. It needs to come closer into the work. So I need to redesign that and rebuild it. I'd say the whole lathe is about 80% done, and that other 20% is really crucial. For me to draw plans for this right now and sell them, it just wouldn't be ethical right now because the lathe isn't good enough. There are a lot of other little advancements and changes that I want to make, and I'm going to do all that stuff before I release the plans. But for right now, I am burned out on this project. So I'm going to take a couple weeks off, get on to some other content, and I know I have viewers that aren't woodturners who are really ready for me to get off of this lathe thing for a while. And that's fine, because I need a break too. So I'm going to take a couple weeks, work on other things, slowly refine this, and I'll get back to you when the plans are ready. I've put too much work into this not to carry it all the way through to the end, but now that I know that it works, that it's sturdy, that it's safe, all of those things, it's a great sense of accomplishment. I didn't think I could do this. It was really an experiment, but it worked out well, and I'm really proud of the finished product. Another thing that I'm pretty proud of is I got contacted by some really nice guys from a company this week, and they wanted to give me some free product and a discount code to do a sponsored video for them. And it was really flattering to be asked, but I said, no thanks. My channel is supported by my viewers. And um, that gave me a good feeling, because I'm not in this game to shill for tool manufacturers. Um, and I'm not trying to throw any shade on the company that got in touch with me. Nice guys, really good company. But my job is not to advertise for them. My job is to make content for you guys, to teach people things, to entertain people. And I want to get paid for that. And so if you're interested in supporting this kind of independent, unsponsored content, go on over to patreon.com slash rexkruger. You can support the work that I do, and you can get all sorts of extra stuff. Like, for instance, this week I taught a class in plane restoration, and I wrote a big handout for that, and then I gave out the handout to all of my patrons. It's like a six-page PDF that tells you all about how I find and restore vintage hand planes. And that's free if you're a patron. Also, it's the holiday season. I've got t-shirts and hoodies in the store, rexkruger.com slash store. You can also always click on my Amazon link where I have all the products and tools that I used in this video. And when you shop with my Amazon link, I get a little kickback on that, and that really helps keep the lights on around here. Either way, I will be back next week. I don't know what the video will be, but I promise that it will not be related to building your own lathe, uh, which is exciting. And uh, I hope everybody's holiday season is not very stressful. Mine is, is very stressful so far. It's not, not great. <laughs> Thanks for watching.